So what is hoisting in JavaScript and how does it work? Let's start by pretending that we want to log to our console a variable called animal. If we were to save this and jump down and run this file, you'll notice we get an error here. So it says that animal here is not defined. So that's to be expected. We haven't defined this variable anywhere. Now, if we were to come up here and we were to actually define a variable called animal, and we were to set this equal to cat, as you would expect, if we were to save this and come down here and run this again, you would see that it logs cat. Now, where something interesting happens is if we were to define this animal after the logging that we have above. So if we come down here and we save this and we run the file, you notice that it logs undefined and it doesn't throw the error that we previously saw here. So what is happening here? Essentially, this is JavaScript hoisting. So you can define your variable below the actual invocation of that variable. And if you do that, it essentially does this thing called hoisting where it defines the variable animal above where it is called, but it doesn't give it a value. So it's essentially the same thing as writing your code like this, but it all happens automatically. So if I save this and run the code again, you'll notice that we still see the undefined here. Now you don't actually have to come and write this here because it happens automatically through JavaScript hoisting. This gets really interesting when you combine this with the concept of lexical scope in JavaScript. So let's take a look at what that is. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to define a new function. So let's call this a function and we'll just call it test. And in here, we're going to move our console.log of animal. And we'll move it in here. So what's actually happening here? Essentially, we define this variable outside of the function and we use the var keyword here. And what that does is it globally scopes this variable and then through lexical scope, we can actually access this variable on any kind of construct within that scope. Since we're calling animal here and it was defined outside, we have access to this variable. Let's just save this and run it. We expect to see cat. Well, we first have to call this function. Let's come back down here and let's call test. And let's save this and let's run this again. So now you'll see that we have cat printed to our console here. And let's just do another quick example of what lexical scope is before we go much further. So let's say for instance, we have a, another variable in here called y, and we set this to one. If we were to define another function within here, and let's call our function new test, this function would have access to the y variable. So let's do a log here and let's log y. And then outside of this function, let's just call new test. Let's come down here and let's run this. So you see we get one logged here. That's because this is available via lexical scope inside this function because it's within here. Let's come up here and let's actually log animal in here now. You'll see it is also logged the second time because this variable is available inside here. Now, if we were to try to access the Y variable outside of the function, however, it would not be available. So let's come in here and let's just grab this. Let's paste it outside of the function and let's change animal to Y and this should throw an error. Okay, you see that since this is defined in a higher up scope, it is not available outside of the function. Again, let's do this as another example. Let's move this console log inside of this first function, but let's define Y inside of the second function. Again, this should not be available because it is outside of the scope of where this is defined. So I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna come back down here, clear this and run this again, and you'll notice that we get the same error. Okay, so that's how lexical scope works. Let's go back to hoisting real quick. I'm gonna move up here. I'm gonna clean up this whole second function here. And we have our console.log of animal. 
If we just come back down here and run this one more time, you'll notice that it logs cat because of the lexical scope. So now if we were coming in here and we were to define a variable called animal and assign this to dog, you might get a strange result. So if I save this and I come down here and I run this again, you notice that now it prints undefined. So again, what's happening here is we're defining this new variable scoped inside here called animal, the same name as the one scoped above it. And what's happening because of hoisting is it's essentially doing the same thing where it defines the new animal variable without a value above, and then it's console.logging that undefined value, and then it's getting this find a value. So let's just save this and run it to show that we get the same result. Come in here, I run that, it's still undefined. So you could come up here and you could actually just move this variable declaration above this, and you would get dog now. So if we come in here and we run it, you can see that it would get dog. And it's just something to keep in mind when you're running these functions to know how the scoping's working and then understand that hoisting will take place if you're not careful. Now with the new JavaScript specification, you can actually come in here and you can use the let keyword instead if you wanna avoid some of these troubles. So if we came in here and we define this as let, and we move this back down to here, and we change this to let, and ran that, you'll notice that we get an error. So this let is no longer available within this function here. So this is block scoping. And because it's block scoping, this new function space only has the variables defined to it using the let command. So if you wanted to define this above, you could move this above it, you could save it. If you ran that, you would get dog. Or you could do what we kind of had before. We could just define this like this, and then we could say animal equal dog. We could paste that. If we run that, you'll notice that we don't have it defined ahead of time. So this works a little more similar to what you might expect to find in other programming languages. Hopefully that's helpful for you to understand how hoisting in JavaScript works and the fundamentals of what lexical scope is. Thanks for watching this video, and if it's helpful to you, please hit the like button so YouTube knows to share this with other people, and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more of these types of videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Take care.